definition that we've arrived at. Um, we'll hope to clarify those points and I'm going to try and outline most of them tonight. So essentially I'm going to follow just initially at any rate that same plan in terms of uh, how things have been redefined. So we're going to start with basically how it affects responder um, not so much with interference immediately over the one club opening but more with interference over an asking bid and the good news here is this okay so responder and their actions are largely unaffected by any of these changes because the definition of preemptive interference over an asking bid as opposed to before it is essentially unchanged. We still treat uh, we don't I, the only thing that kicks in here is the contracted scales um, for most of the asking bids not all of them beta and zeta are always unaffected but the uh, compressed scales for the asking bids only kick in still if the interference over the asking bid jumps a level to at least the level of three no trumps or beyond so so we haven't changed that at all uh, any questions so far as far as responder is concerned does everybody not quite follow that so responders actions haven't changed at all the the compressed scales are still as they were um, the uh, the only thing I will mention which I don't think I actually mentioned during the course of uh, the sessions on asking bid interference over the last few weeks um, but it is mentioned on the site is that if we have four level interference over a positive response to one club then if asker makes an alpha ask over that four level interference then we have a special compressed scale for alpha which is even more compressed than the normal compressed scale for alpha which is that the responses to such an alpha are only in relation to support and without reference to controls in other words a one-step response to that alpha ask is denying support and a two-step response is showing support at least three to a top honor or four small so you will see that on the site um, I think it's not something I specifically mentioned it isn't something that happens very often so supposing you get a um, uh, a sequence such as uh, one club one heart from responder four clubs over call so now we've got a four club over call over the positive response to uh, one club supposing opener now bids four diamonds for the sake of example alpha in diamonds um, now the responses to that alpha are four hearts denies diamond support four spades promises it and there's no mention of controls we still have relay beta but it gives us a chance of a just stopping in the five level in diamonds uh, and then letting responder make the going if they want to um, if, if opener just has a fairly common a garden one club opener doesn't fancy pushing their way uh, past five diamonds they could just sign off in five diamonds and uh, 
let Responder take some further action if they feel fit. Okay, any questions so far on actions by Responder? Okay, so just to confirm all that, Okay, so D1P2 and R1P2 um, apply over normal interference and over preemptive interference for that matter. But if we have preemptive interference, uh, i.e., a jump to a level at, at or beyond three no trumps, um, then the contracted scales kick in depending on what the asking bit is. Um, just as before so that part of the website hasn't changed at all so just to confirm what I was telling you about uh, the four level interference Okay, let's press on because I've got quite a lot to cover tonight. Okay, so this is really the heart of the lesson because this is the redefinition of preemptive, preemptive interference where it is over the response to a previous asking bid or over a positive response to one club. So this is now how, uh, how it's defined. Okay, so originally the definition of preemptive interference was the same right across the board. It was a jump to a level at or beyond three no trumps or game in our suit um, but effectively over three no trumps okay so now it's any sequence at all where either one of our opponents has jumped the bidding jumped the level in the bidding at one at some point either opponent doesn't matter which and the opponent in front of Asker has bid something so it might be that Asuka's left hand opponent jumped in the bidding and has been supported by their partner in front of Asuka or it might be the bidder in front of Asuka has just made a jump over call over the positive response to one club okay the next one so the, there's essentially three parts to this that's the first part okay the other big effect of what we've discussed over the last few weeks and this has been en route to the system for some time so for at least a couple of years now is barrage bidding which is where we haven't had any jumps primarily if we have had any jumps by either opponent then automatically the uh, um, paragraph one above kicks in. Okay, so barrage bidding. Um, okay, barrage bidding is defined as follows. Okay, so ops of bid three times 
during the auction. That doesn't include doubles or redoubles. Because doubles or redoubles gain us space rather than losing us any space. So if Ops have bid three times during the auction and the most recent interference i.e. the bid immediately in front of Asker because this is only applying if there's been no interference in front of Asker none of this applies no matter what's gone on before because Asker doesn't have any options here they just have to bid so the most interference was at at least the three level that's the second part of barrage bidding and the first the third part is this okay so if we haven't agreed a suit yet by means of asking bids then it's only at unfavorable vulnerability i.e. we are vulnerable and they are not at any other vulnerability um, this would apply okay on the other hand if we have agreed a trump suit it's only an unfavorable vulnerability so we are not vulnerable and they are vulnerable that this would apply so it's more likely that we're going to implement this when we haven't agreed a suit because it's only at uh, red versus green that we would kick in barrage bidding or treat it as barrage bidding but if we have agreed a trump suit um, it's only um, it's only at green versus red that we would tend to favor uh, applying the definition of barrage bidding okay so just to summarize that um, oh sorry and there's one more bit the third part so that's the second part is barrage bidding and any interference at all whatever's happened before at the four level or above is considered barrage bidding it's not normal that ops are just suddenly going to pipe in with a bid of a suit at the four level um, you know halfway through an asking bid sequence normally it will be the case that they will have bid something first but if at any stage whatever's happened previously in the sequence if either opponent um, well, or rather sorry if Asker's right hand opponent makes a bid at the four level then we treat that as barrage bidding and the whole sequence is now considered preemptive interference okay so um, just to summarize that again so it's any a sequence where where either opponent has jumped and at the point in we're considering Asker's right opponent right hand opponent has bid something none of this applies if Asker's right opponent right hand opponent hasn't bid something here secondly uh, any sequence where they demonstrate demonstrate barrage bidding which is them bidding three times uh, the most recent interference being at the three level and if we haven't agreed a trump suit at any vulnerability except for red versus green which is where we're least likely to get a decent penalty and if we have agreed a trump suit only at the point in the situation where we're most likely to get a decent penalty or possibly a better penalty than bidding game uh, which is green versus red so those that's what applies for barrage bidding and lastly if uh, either of war if ask his right hand opponent um, makes any bid at the four level not double or redouble but any actual bid 
we treat that as preemptive interference. Okay, any questions so far about the the redefinition of preemptive interference before I move on? Go on, John. We are waiting with bated breath. No. <laughs> no, John. Um, it's a, any any interference at any vulnerability. There's no there's no specification of that because that's. That's the option three. There is part of preemptive interference as a whole. It's not just a part of barrage bidding. Okay. Um, I've tried to sort of group the points there so that that was fairly clear. Um, if 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 ops stick their neck in the noose at the four level, I think we have to give Aska the chance of thinking. I'm not quite so sure. I like this. And uh, I'd rather, I think I'd rather just take a penalty. I think we have to, at the four level, I think we have to give them the option of that. In practice, I suspect most of the time, if we do get four level interference, we will also have barrage bidding as well. Okay. All righty. Obviously, the main effect of whether we treat this interference as preemptive or not has to do with whether pass by Asker is Levensol or not. That's the main, the main thrust of it. Okay. If if the interference in front of Asker is deemed preemptive for any of the above reasons, then pass by Aska is Levensol, which forces a double by um, Responder, and Aska now has the option of passing that double for penalties, or they can just move to make a bid, which is essentially a sign-off, unless it's obviously invitational. If where pass equals Levensol. Um, applies, ask a bid something or doubles, then we're back into straight asking bids and uh, D1P2 or R1P2, but it's more almost certainly going to be D1P2 in terms of backward asking, okay? Except the P2 side of both of those is is effectively non-applicable because pass is Levensol. Okay. Um, so that, that's that's really what the definition of preemptive interference has to do with initially, at any rate. Let's have a few examples of this in terms of how how we now treat uh, things as preemptive interference. And you'll see in these the difference um, between how we apply it now and how we used to do it. Okay, so here we had a pass over one club, respond a bid one heart, and our Asker's right-hand opponents now jumped in with three clubs. Now, previously, that wouldn't have been considered preemptive interference because it was below the level of three no trumps, but now it is. So supposing, for the sake of example, uh, Responder has a decent holding in clubs and a heart shortage, they may think, Ooh, I'd actually quite fancy just doubling this for penalties. It's obvious that partner and I have got a, a big misfit in hearts. Um, and uh, so pass would be Levensol there. Um, double would be gamma in hearts because we're um, 
two steps away from hearts being available as a gamma um, and uh, so on any questions so far on that uh, on that sequence so that one is deemed preemptive have a look at another one okay so here we had a simple overcall of two clubs over one club and Asuka's right hand opponent has bid three clubs over the two heart positive is this preemptive? no because neither opponent has jumped so option one in the, the, def the redefinition doesn't apply we're not at the four level so option three doesn't apply and ops have only bid twice so far in the bidding so barrage bidding isn't satisfied so we're just back to normal d1 p2 here over three clubs um, so pass is gamma in hearts and double would be alpha in spades any question on that score excuse me I'm just going to take a pill or two not just at the moment Let's bear with me a minute okay so next example okay so in the, in the first example Asuka's right hand opponent jumped in this example we had a jump bid immediately over the one club opener responder made a, a positive of three hearts and our right hand opponent has just supported spades with a bit of three spades now again in the previous in the original definition this wouldn't have been considered preemptive because the bid immediately in front of Asuka wasn't a jump and it wasn't above three no trumps but now again we have satisfied option one in the redefinition in that one of the opponents has jumped here it was Asuka's left hand opponent and Asuka's right hand opponent has bid something in front of them so this we would consider uh, barrage bidding and so here pass would be Levensol forcing a double and double would again be Gamma in hearts any questions on that third example okay so here we had a jump bit of two spades over the one club opening and instead of bidding a suit uh, responder made a positive double over two spades and Asuka's right hand opponent has redoubled is this preemptive? no it's not because although Asuka's left hand opponent jumped Asuka's right hand opponent hasn't actually bid anything they merely redoubled so now pass couldn't possibly equal Levensol um, and pass would be Gamma in hearts here uh, not Gamma in hearts sorry pass would be Alpha in hearts sorry that was a typo um, and obviously there's no re-redouble here so, so pass is the only space saving option we have any questions on this one if you do have any questions please shout up because uh, although I have explained this on the website there aren't isn't much in the way of examples yet for the rede redefined sequences um, indeed I haven't yet changed any of the examples on that page um, 
I have put in the redefined things, but uh, I've been working for the last solid for the last 12 days, so I haven't had that much chance to do it. Okay, example five. Okay, so here we have a slightly longer sequence. Uh, we had no ring bit of one club, an overcall of one heart, uh, responder showed a spade positive, Asker's right hand opponent bid two clubs, so no preemptive interference yet. We've had only two bids by ops and no jumps, and we're still at the two level. So now opener passes, which is gamma in, in hearts. Their right, left hand opponent rather, passes. Responder bids two diamonds. And now right hand opponent bids two hearts. Okay, so now this is considered preemptive interference now because we've had three bids by ops. None of them particularly taking up a huge amount of space. I mean, we're still at the two level here, but they have bid three times, but it's still not barrage bidding because the most recent interference was only at the two level. So we've, we've satisfied one part of barrage bidding, which is three bids by ops, but it's still only at the two level. So this still actually isn't considered preemptive interference overall. We have to satisfy three things for barrage bidding. One is three bids by ops. The second one is uh, the most recent bid was at at least the three level. And the last one uh, also, I mean, I haven't mentioned vulnerability here. Obviously, that has an effect. But the last one was that uh, um, Asker's right-hand opponent has bid something. So we'll assume for the sake of this example that the, the vulnerability wasn't satisfying um, it. In other words, we haven't Sorry, we have agreed a trump suit here, so we'll have to assume that uh, um, I mean it doesn't matter actually what the vulnerability is because we aren't at the three level. But even if we were at the three level, um, given that the pass over two clubs agrees hearts, we have agreed a trump suit, so it's only an unfavourable vulnerability where we aren't vulnerable sorry at favorable vulnerability rather where we aren't vulnerable and they are vulnerable if we were at the three level it would only be at that vulnerability that we would consider this barrage bidding any questions on that one okay let's try this one then Okay, so here we had uh, an overcall of one heart. Partner makes a spade positive as before, but now Asuka's right hand opponent bids two hearts. We bid pass, uh, sorry, not two hearts. And pass isn't gamma there, I'm sorry, I was rushed when I was doing this. Two spades, I thought I'd actually change that. Two spades here would be gamma, not pass because um, word, word, two spades is a cheap gamma, so we would use two spades rather than pass. Um, partner bids three clubs as the gamma response, and now right-hand opponent bids three hearts. Now we have demonstrated barrage bidding if we are at favourable vulnerability because we've agreed hearts, because we are at the three level now. So they bid three times, we are at the three level, and uh, there's a bid by Asker's right hand opponent, 
and we are at favourable vulnerability. If we weren't at favourable vulnerability, then it wouldn't be considered barrage bidding. So if we were at red versus green, we wouldn't treat this as, as, uh, as barrage here because we need to take, um, we've agreed a trump suit, we need to take ops quite a lot off to get a better result than our vulnerable game. But if we were at favourable vulnerability here, pass would be 11 sol and a double would be relay beta. And again, this comes back to something else I'm going to touch on a little bit later on, which is that there is a, and, and there always was, it, nothing has actually changed here, but the, the redefinition has given us a chance to really stress this point, that pass equals Levensol has absolute priority over everything. Um, Sigma comes next in the order of priority, in that Sigma takes precedence over relay beta and the only thing that takes precedence over sigma and repeat sigma is pass being Levensol and that's only if there's preemptive interference and lastly relay beta takes precedence over anything else other than sigma and pass equals Levensol so this is to do with what pass might be primarily and if pass is um, Levensol and a double is available or a redouble then it determines what the double or redouble is um, so hopefully um, that's made that clear that I mean there's there's plenty of stuff on the website to do with that but it is spread out a bit but there is a specific mention of that particular point that uh, there is that order of priority um, so sometimes relay beta might be even if pass and double were available relay beta might actually get bumped to um, an actual relay over the interference because pass was Levensol and double was Sigma potentially um, there might even be times where uh, pass was Levensol um, I don't think there's actually any times where Sigma um, would also be an actual relay off the top of my head I can't think of one um, where Sigma would be a relay and relay beta would be the next cheapest relay there probably might be some but I can't think of one off the top of my head okay um, last example here okay so here we have uh, one club interference of two clubs two spade positive from responder then a pass three spades gamma uh, a re uh, response of four diamonds and now Asuka's right hand opponent pops in with four hearts we haven't had any jumps so option one doesn't apply we've only had two bids by ops so barrage bidding doesn't apply but what we do have is some kind of interference at the four level by our opponents in front of Asuka so option three here in the redefinition is satisfied so here pass would be Levensol regardless of vulnerability and double would be relay beta 
because we've just had a gamma response of four diamonds so beta would take precedence over anything else other than pass equals Levensol. We've got no sigma, sigma isn't in the game so pass is Levensol and double is relay beta. Okay, so that little section there is is absolutely the core of um, what we've ended up deciding in the discussion forum. Actually, most of that was uh, stuff that John Lute and I eventually arrived at in a, a previous discussion on this topic um, last year sometime. Um, but there have been a few tweaks since. Um, and what I like about that is that although it's a little bit compli more complicated than a, a jump to a level above three no trumps, A, it satisfies most of the people, not Brian because he's never going to be satisfied, but uh, satisfies most of the people who wanted more opportunities to double ops than we used to have, but also it's made it slightly more systematic. Yes, go ahead, John. Right, we had that, I think, actually, in one of the sequences above, that we did have a jump by ops, by our, by our left-hand opponent. We have a positive double, which is normally going to be, is more likely to be balanced without a decent enough stop in spades. But it doesn't have to be that. It may be that they've got a, an insufficiently good suit uh, to show a suit positive at the three level. Um, so it's just showing points really that positive double and no particularly good bid that they fancy making. So now we have a redouble. This is not considered preemptive because uh, Asuka's right hand opponent hasn't actually bid anything. Okay, so now uh, assuming that the two spade bid was natural uh, if it isn't, there's a section coming up in a minute where we'll look at that. But uh, so here, um, pass by uh, opener would be beta because we recognize that most of the time, uh, not all the time, but most of the time, um, responder is more likely to have a reasonably balanced hand here so in in sort of recognition of that we have now defined that pass over this redouble would be beta rather than uh, alpha in hearts okay john i think right yeah, that's right. I, I mean, actually, I think that I've actually got an example coming up in a minute of that exact sequence or similar to it. Um, we'll find out in a minute. Uh, when, I, when we have a look at positive doubles a bit later on, I think there is one coming up with actually that exact sequence. Um, okay. Right. So any any questions at all, any more questions about um, the actual redefinition of preemptive interference and any of the examples that we've uh, we've looked at. I do cover that exact point anyway, John, in, in the section, little section I've got on positive doubles a bit later on in the lesson, um, just to clarify it. Okay.
Okay, so uh, one of the things that we looked at, and these were both actually suggestions by Brian Meadows, which, which we all seem to like. Um, there are two new exceptions to how D1P2 and R1P2 work. Um, they're not very frequent ones. Well, one is more frequent than the other. Um, you'll see these. Okay, so whatever's happened here, and it may be that this double is the only opposition bid in the sequence, okay? If either opponent at any stage, sorry, not either opponent, if Asker's right hand opponent, it's always Asker's right hand opponent that matters here, um, otherwise, we're not talking about an action by Asker. If Asker's right hand opponent makes a lead directing double of a response to a previous asking bid in a suit that hasn't yet been the subject of an Epsilon ask. Okay, so it's a fairly precise situation here. We've pretty much got to be at the stage of a bidding of bidding where we've agreed trumps and we're in a position to use epsilon so if we haven't yet um, agreed a suit then epsilon isn't in in the frame and this wouldn't apply okay so if supposing we've agreed hearts and uh, and either in response to the gamma in hearts or in response to relay beta responder makes a response that is actually a bid of a suit other than hearts which we haven't yet made an epsilon ask in and asker's right hand opponent makes a lead directing double of that suit that's when this would kick in. Okay, so basically we change, we've had a double, a lead directing double by Asker's right hand opponent. Okay, so now R1P2, in other words, redouble being an Ask in the suit below and pass being in a, a bid in the suit two below changes to become R naught P1. In other words, redouble is an epsilon in the suit that responder actually bid. Okay. So supposing responders bid four clubs in response to a previous ask We've agreed trumps um, and uh, Asker's right-hand opponent doubles clubs as a lead directing bid. Okay, now redouble would be epsilon in clubs. In other words, the suit that was last bid. Anybody unsure about that? Can anybody not follow that? Well, obviously, it depends on the situation, Esther. Um, if Relay Beta was still in the frame, then, re then Pass would be Relay Beta because Relay Beta takes precedence over anything else. Again, that's something I'm going to be stressing a bit more in a minute. But if, if Relay Beta had already been used and wasn't required again, then uh, yes, it would be suit below. But um, So if there's nothing else that takes precedence over an ask in the suit below, then yes, pass would be an ask in the suit below. We can't be in the position of pass equals 11 solve here 
because our right hand opponent has only doubled and pass equals 11 sol never applies over a double ever okay um, so redouble it just moves up and if you think about it it's quite logical that that the ask in clubs has actually become if, if our right hand opponents made a lead directing double of clubs quite probably the most important thing that we want to ask partner is actually what their club control is that may be a real issue for us um, and that's also the most expensive epsilon because the only way we could otherwise bid epsilon in clubs is to bid five clubs um, so it, it, it's a win-win that um, uh, to make it R0 P1 rather than R1 P2 okay anybody got any questions about that first exception to uh, D1 P2 Okay, here's an example. Okay, so here we have one club, one heart, one no trump, beta, two diamonds, three controls, two hearts, gamma, no opposition bidding so far, uh, three hearts, two top honors, six card hearts, four diamonds, epsilon in diamonds, and responder bids five clubs second and third round control of diamonds and suddenly Asuka's right hand opponent pops in with a lead directing double of five clubs so now here redouble is epsilon in clubs and pass would be epsilon in spades we don't need relay beta anymore there's no question of pass being Levensol So redouble is epsilon in the suit that was last bid, clubs, and pass would be an epsilon in spades. Any questions? Okay, let's have a, a move on to the second exception, which is um, fairly similar. In, in character but different kind of situation okay so the first example is normally going to be probably at a fairly high level in the bidding the second one is almost always going to be immediately over the positive response to one club because that's the most common time for this kind of situation to apply and it's when Asker's right hand opponent makes some kind of artificial overcall where they are not promising the suit that they've actually bid now we had some discussion in the forum as to exactly how this should be um, uh, defined at one stage I said where they don't guarantee the suit that they've actually bid and got pulled up by Brian because um, he thinks it was more obvious if you say don't promise it for some reason okay or right uh, no I think I said actually where they might not have the suit that they've actually bid um, and he pulled me up so anyway uh, so if you imagine the kinds of overcalls that we commonly use as as people who play against precision quite a lot we're looking at bids like Panama where you've either got the other suit or you've got the other three clearly you're not promising the suit that you've actually bid bids like standard suction where a bit of two clubs with standard suction is going to be diamonds or both majors but 
you won't have clubs. Or it might be a bit of clubs would be clubs or both red suits. Now here you might have clubs, but you haven't guaranteed it because you, you might have both red suits. Okay, so here again you haven't promised clubs. Uh, bids like Amsbury, um, even some bids like Michaels. If if uh, ops are playing some kind of Michaels bid, where I don't know, responder makes a a positive in diamonds, and our right-hand opponent immediately bids three diamonds to show both majors. That would qualify here. Okay. So in those circumstances where they make an artificial or semi-artificial, um, actually there's no such thing as semi-artificial, they make an artificial overcall where they're not promising or guaranteeing the suit that they've actually bid. It may be that they definitely don't have it, or it might be that they might not have it. But if they're not promising it, then this would apply. So in the previous exception, it was uh, R1P2 becoming R0P2, P1 rather. Now, uh, because we've got a bid rather than a double, it's uh, an exception to D1P2 effectively becoming D0P1 in that pass would still be gamma or beta depending on the nature of the positive that responders made but now double would be alpha in the suit that Asuka's right hand opponent actually bid so back to that previous example um, we have an opening of one club and say um, uh, a positive of one heart and now um, sorry a positive of one spade rather and now Asuka's right hand opponent bids two clubs which is um, say diamonds or both majors So now a double by opener would be alpha in clubs and pass would still be beta because respond a bid one spade to show a balanced hand. And again, the pass equals beta takes precedence over anything else still because it's over a positive response to one club. Any questions there? And there are loads of other gadgets that may, they might use against one club where that might apply. So that first example we had a positive response of one heart and two clubs with straight suction as I mentioned diamonds or both majors so now double here would be alpha in clubs the suit that they actually bid and passes gamma in hearts because that takes precedence over anything else in the second example uh, responder bid one spade um, 8 plus balanced and now we had a two diamonds a sort of Amsbury kind of Panama-ish bid showing diamonds single suited or the other three suits and a shortage in diamonds so now double would be alpha in diamonds here because they haven't promised diamonds and pass would be beta
Right, now, here we've got one club, one no trump, spade positive. And then a three heart bid showing hearts or both majors. Okay. Just bear in mind here that the three heart bid is preemptive with our new definition because we've had uh, a jump bid by our right hand opponent. So now this is a slight variation on the above because now passes Leven Sol here and double would be Gamma in spades. Why? Because whatever happens our right hand opponent definitely has hearts. They've either got hearts or they've got both majors and there are versions of suction that are like that. Okay, um, so they've definitely got hearts, so this exception doesn't apply here. And because it's preemptive interference, passes Levensol and uh, double would be Gamma in spades. Any questions? Okay. Okay, I mean this has always been the case. But I've just taken the the opportunity that that this exercise has presented itself to really hammer home this. That if we've got interference in front of Asker in an asking bid sequence that is considered preemptive then pass equals Levensol takes precedence over absolutely anything there is nothing that trumps pass equals Levensol So whether pass equals Levensol is in the frame or not, Sigma takes precedence over anything else apart from pass equals Levensol, which has number one precedence. So if Sigma is going to be the cheapest relay, then it's either going to be pass if pass equals Levensol hasn't bumped it, or if pass equals Levensol is available, then double or redouble, uh, most likely double, if uh, pass equals Levensol is in the frame, uh, is going to be Sigma. If Sigma is the cheapest bid rather than, or the relay, rather than a bid in the agreed jumpsuit below game level. And last but not least. So if Relay Beta is available, in other words, we don't yet know how many controls Responder has, and we've just agreed a trump suit. So now, if Pass equals Lev is in play, then it takes precedence, so Pass is that. If the asking bid was Alpha that agreed the trump suit, and Sigma is in play, then that takes precedence over Relay Beta. 
So if pass was love and soul, double or redouble uh, would be sigma. And relay beta would be the cheapest relay. And that would take precedence over anything other than sigma or pass equals love and soul. Okay, there is a little bit of a section coming up in a minute on Sigma. But here we had one club, one heart positive, one spade alpha, two diamonds showing support, naught to three controls. And now we had a jump bit of four clubs by uh, Asuka's right hand opponent. So this is preemptive. In, on several bases it's, it's preemptive it's at the 4 level and it's a jump so now pass would be Levensol spades isn't within 2 bids ok it's 3 bids to spades from here so we wouldn't normally be considering even over preemptive interference we wouldn't be considering uh four spades for sigma so now double is sigma and relay beta is effectively bumped to an actual relay of four diamonds I'm just going to let you think about that for a minute because um, when I come to the little section on sigma in just a minute uh, you'll see how uh, that is um, part of what we've clarified to do with Sigma. Most of the things to, stuff to do with Sigma in this exercise was really clarifying what the position was um, because it wasn't, we felt it wasn't adequately um, explained in the web notes up to point. Um, but is anybody unsure about this business of what what things take precedence over which other things? Okay. Okay, now primarily what we had to think about in this uh, discussion that we've had in the discussion forum was actually when Sigma was at game level. There are a couple of sequences um, you can actually construct one where you could actually have Sigma at game level without any interference from Ops but it's quite hard to, to it's a fairly brief but tortuous and incredibly expensive sequence um, where Sigma would be at game level so normally when we have Sigma at game level it is going to be because we've got interference we've had interference okay so if we don't have any interference over the positive response to alpha then the rule is um, basically that the normal rules apply in other words if we can reach the agreed trump suit within two bids then we use a bit of the trump suit as uh, sigma and everything else is just D1P2 and or relay beta and so on um, however if the agreed chump suit the bit of the agreed chump suit would be at game level 
then we revert to the cheapest possible action or the cheapest possible relay being Sigma and if so this is when there's there's no interference over the positive response there might be interference before it um, so if given the the alpha response uh, we would normally be thinking of a bit of the trump suit being sigma because it's within two bids if that bid in the trump suit would be at game level then we don't bother with that because we need that as a sign off okay so now we revert to the cheapest possible relay or the cheapest possible action being sigma that might be um, a relay um, in fact it would be a relay and similarly relay beta there would be bumped to the next cheapest relay okay I'll just let you think about that for a second um, just to let it sink in so if it if we're effectively at game level and if we weren't at game level because we're within two bids of the agreed trump suit over the positive response to alpha we would be um, using a bit of the trump the agreed trump suit as sigma and everything else would be as normal if we're at game level then that changes and we use the relay as Sigma and the bit of the agreed trump suit as a sign off again that's if there's no interference in front of Asuka okay so the next situation is where we have some kind of interference over the positive response to alpha but it's not preemptive as we've redefined it now effectively we're in the same situation um, in the sense that if we can bid the agreed trump suit below game level and we're within two bids of the agreed trump suit then we just bid the cheap the, the agreed trump suit below game level as Sigma uh, if we um, would be at game level however then the cheapest possible action is Sigma and the next but one cheapest action would be relay beta but again if we can do it below game level then that goes out the window if we can use beta in the agree sorry sigma in the agreed trump suit below game level and it's within two bids then we always use the bid in the trump suit as being Sigma any questions so far if your heads aren't spinning yet then I'm not explaining it right okay okay so now if we do have interference over the positive response to alpha and it is preemptive as we've now redefined it then obviously pass equals Levensol takes precedence over everything the next cheapest action is Sigma so if Sigma would be a relay 
double becomes sigma and uh, the next cheapest thing would be a relay and that would be relay beta however if we are in if we are within two bids of the agreed chump suit and actually it doesn't matter whether we are at game level or not um, really hang on or does it not sure what I've written here All oh, right, sorry, and, and with below game level. Sorry, if we're if we're below game level, and the agreed chump suit is within two bids, then again we always use that if we are um, uh, within two bids of the agreed chump suit. We always use a bit of the agreed chump suit below game level as sigma. If we're not within two bids, and so now we're in the cheapest possible action being sigma then double would be sigma and the cheapest relay would be relay beta Okay, so um, this is actually the only bit of this that's still a little bit contentious. So if you imagine the situation where we've got a positive response to alpha and then we get some preemptive interference. So now pass becomes Levensol. And supposing we are within two bids of the agreed chump suit sorry uh, hang on let me get my head round this um, yeah we are within two bids of the agreed chump suit now we can actually reliably distinguish between Sigma and a sign off by bidding the agreed chump suit because if we wanted to sign off, we would go via pass equals Levensol. Okay, so the uh, supposing we've agreed spades as uh, trumps with a positive response to alpha, and ops come in with a jump bid of four diamonds. So now pass equals Levensol. And if we um, didn't have the interference, then we would be using the cheapest possible action here as being sigma, so that we could distinguish between sigma and a sign off in spades. But because we've had this preemptive interference of four diamonds and passes Levensol, we can easily distinguish between four spades direct being sigma and pass Levensol double four spades being a sign off. Now we don't need the cheapest possible relay to be sigma. So there's a grey area which which hopefully we will clarify because I don't think we've actually nailed down which is preferable here um, whether we want to keep the relay as Sigma or whether we want to because it's cheaper or whether we want to keep the direct bid of the agreed trump suit at game level as being Sigma because it can't possibly be a right a, a sign off okay any questions on Sigma.
unfortunately, Sigma is a fairly rare bird, so, um, you know, that's only going to come up a couple of times a year, hopefully. <laughs> um, righty ho. Moving on. Okay, I mentioned positive doubles before. Okay, now, positive doubles. Um, we originally, the system, and actually, um, it still hasn't changed, I don't think yet. I haven't changed the, uh, the section on positive doubles yet. Um, we set the level as two spades, but we did say, even then, that it was up to each partnership to draw the line as to where they wanted positive doubles to kick in. And right from the beginning, some pairs have chosen a lower level than two spades. I don't think anybody's chosen a higher level than two spades, but I know of, I think, at least one pair that used two diamonds, and certainly several pairs used two hearts. Um... In fact, I'm, I may be wrong, but I, my suspicion is that most of the experienced OCP pairs now set it lower than two spades, certainly to two hearts. It is still up to each pair to decide. Um, I think probably I am going to actually lower as I've said there, I am actually going to lower the OCP specification, in other words, the system definition of where positive doubles kick in, I'm going to lower that to two hearts, just in recognition that I think quite a lot of pairs already use two hearts, and there's, um, it's just in recognition of that. It's still up to, if some pairs want to keep it as two spades or even two no trumps, that's absolutely fine. As long as a given partnership is on the same wavelength you can set it at whatever level you like okay but I think what's shown on the website is going to get changed from two spades to two hearts however I don't think anybody is going to set it at such a low level that a positive double is ever going to be in play unless ops have made a jump bid over one club I don't, I've not heard of anybody who uses positive doubles over an overcall of two clubs by ops. If anybody knows of one, please let me know and shout up now. But I'm not aware of it. I've never seen it happen. So the lowest I've ever seen it is at two diamonds. And I think that was only one pair and I can't even remember who it was. Um, but even, even two diamonds over one club is a jump bid. So it's always, in practice, going to be after a jump bid by the person, by Asker's left-hand opponent, is the only time when positive doubles are going to be in play, potentially. So if we've had a positive double, and Asker's right-hand opponent bids anything over the positive double, we've automatically satisfied the new definition of preemptive interference because one of them has jumped and asked his right hand opponent to bid something therefore passes Levensol and what we hadn't clarified is what beta was going to be or rather what double was going to be Okay, so positive double is still a hand, and this is still the definition of what a positive double shows. It's a hand worth a positive, but with no good bid. 
often or indeed most of the time this is probably going to be a hand that's relatively balanced but with an insufficiently good holding in op suit to show a balance positive okay if they sat there with king 10 9 x in ops's suit they've easily got and their balance they've easily got a good enough holding in op suit to bid two no trumps over this two level jump they might want to bid might not want to bid three no trumps over such a jump but uh, um, they might choose three no trumps rather than a positive double if the interference is at the three level okay but there's no guarantee that actually that is going to be the case and again this was discussed in the uh, discussion in the discussion forum over the last few weeks it doesn't have to be that responder is balanced that isn't in the definition of positive double okay it may be that they've got a an unbalanced hand with a long suit but it's not a very good suit and and the website specifically says if supposing it goes one club two spades and responder sat there with a pretty ropey queen 10 9 to 6 or even queen 10 9 to 5 but an unbalanced hand if they bid three hearts over two spades I think opener is entitled to expect that their hearts are going to be slightly better than that than Queen 10 to 6 to 5 rather okay Queen 10 to 6 is a bit more of a grain area but say Queen 10 to 5 I would be perhaps more inclined especially given that it's a fairly expensive positive three hearts over two spades you might prefer to make a positive double and try and bring the hearts in later on so all I'm saying is that you don't have to be balanced very often you will be balanced but without a decent enough holding to bid no trumps you may not have a stop even in op suit um, but it doesn't have to be that way okay so given that if Afka's right-hand opponent bids over the positive double we've automatically satisfied the requirements of preemptive bidding so now passes Levensol we have actually now clarified that double will be beta rather than an ask in the suit below the previous bid which is going to be um, what Asker's right-hand opponents has bid and as John rightly raised um, if we get a sequence like one club two spades positive double redouble now we don't have pass equals leb so pass is relay beta because we recognize that um, the majority of the time it's likely that responder is going to be relatively balanced so for the purposes of what the cheapest possible action by opener is uh, it's going to be beta rather than alpha somewhere else can't be gamma because responder hasn't shown a suit okay any questions so far on positive doubles there's nothing radically new there really um, you would probably have used pass as relay beta rather than anything else before now but the website doesn't specify it and I don't think we'd ever actually um, defined what it was but now it is defined okay Brian Brian is as those of you who read the uh, 
discussion forum on the OCP website. Uh, Brian Meadows is very much in favour of wielding the axe at every conceivable opportunity. Um, uh, he would like one club, one diamond interference, double to be a penalty half the time, I think. Just kidding, but uh, it sometimes feels like that. So anyway, what he and uh, John, I think, and a couple of others... Um, have, have discussed and quite liked the idea of is the positive double being penalty orientated now this I'm not going to adopt this as, as part of the system specification but I can see some justification for it not enough to want to adopt it but uh, it is there on the website as an alternative approach um, and I think John is uh, not John, Brian is um, putting a sort of specification up and he's fleshing it out in the alternative treatment session of the OCP discussion forum uh, on this is uh, a positive double being penalty orientated in other words if Opener wants to cooperate with that they can pass the positive double for penalties and if you like the idea read on um, obviously if uh, so if, if Opener feels that the circumstances the vulnerability in their own hand is uh, such that they fancy leaving that double in uh, probably at the two level but maybe at the three level for penalties then they just pass and that's as simple as that uh, I think there are things to be fleshed out with Brian's proposal particularly to do with how things proceed when Asuka's right hand opponent bids something over this penalty double I'm not satisfied that Brian's worked out fully uh, what Opener's actions are what does a double mean now um, and so on um, so they can pass and and obviously if if opener doesn't fancy it um, then they just carry on bidding and as I've said uh, I don't think Brian's fully worked out all the continuations I may be wrong I haven't looked at the discussion for on the last couple of days uh, I think that needs to be fleshed out and if and when Brian definitely puts a, a full scheme in I will add it to the website it is mentioned on the uh, asking interference page um, but I don't have all the details yet so I haven't been able to flesh it out myself okay any questions on positive doubles um, that last bit like I said is just a, a possible alternative that you might like to consider I'm not sufficiently in favour of it, like I said, to actually adopt it into the system. I can see some instances where it would work, but you are assuming, if you take that approach, that um, responder is always going to be balanced. Doing that when responder may actually have a shortage in op suit is dangerous I feel so you really have to redefine what the positive double shows if you're going to adopt that approach now it has to be you know a radically different definition of what the hand is for a positive double than what the OCP definition is and I, I personally don't think it's going to occur very often but it can occur um, hopefully Brian will try it out and either abandon it or flesh out the proposals no. am I picking on Brian? no I'm not but Brian is one of the prime movers behind this move and most of his suggestions that he's made we've adopted like hot cakes those two uh, 
exceptions to D1P2 that I mentioned before were both Brian's and I, I, I said in the forum if uh, um, you know if Jason and I had thought of it a thought of those back in the 1980s we'd have leapt at them and incorporated them long ago because they're uh, very very good suggestions that we hadn't thought of so this isn't pick on Brian Day um, but Brian is the biggest advocate of wielding the axe and uh, quite a few of the discussions that we had in the last few weeks were to do with because uh, the redefinition of preemptive interference is mostly to do with being able to apply an axe to uh, ops interference wherever possible okay um, so I will confirm that a bit more when uh, it's fleshed out a bit now the last thing that we uh, considered um, is this okay so the normal rule is that if we've agreed a trump suit and we are now at game level in other words the next bit of the agreed trump suit would be at game level then it cannot be a repeat trump ask unless we have established slam values already so supposing responder has shown six controls in response to uh, a low level beta um, six controls is at minimum three aces which is 12 points um, if it's two aces and two kings that's a 14 count and that that counts as establishing slam values just as an example okay um, so if we've established slam values we can have a repeat trump ask at game level because it's unlikely the token is going to want to sign off in at game level in those circumstances so we treat that as a repeat trump ask but that's the exception most of the time it's not going to apply so if we're at game level uh, we don't allow um, repeat trump asks what can happen is that opener signs off and responder thinks well hang on you've not even asked me how many controls I've got and I've got loads and I've got a void that I haven't shown I want to continue and so even if ops even if Asker signs off responder can decide to continue now we don't normally say that he continues with responses for a repeat game ask a repeat trump ask um, normally it would be a matter of him cubiting something to show his suggestion that they go further um, okay so so we don't normally allow repeat trump pass at game level however if we can if we potentially might want a repeat trump ask and again I haven't really specified this but for example supposing we had um, uh, a gamma at a fairly low level um, and responder showed say six card trump suit with two top honors personally I think it's very unlikely it's very rare that um, Asker is going to want to make a repeat trump ask in such a trump suit not normally going to be the case where responders trumps are that good might even have all three top honors and a six card suit um, so you could you could suggest that in those circumstances where it's deemed to be unlikely and again this isn't defined yet 
that it's unlikely that a repeat trump ask is ever going to want to be used now it would make sense to ignore the possibility of a repeat trump ask and just use d1p2 and r1p2 backwards asking over interference um, to ignore the trump suit however supposing responder has shown uh, say five card trump suit to one top honor now it might be important which top honor so we might want to have a repeat trump ask and if we're now at game level um, or rather above game level we want to potentially have a, a means of actually utilizing that repeat trump ask so the rule at the moment is that if we can ask backwards over interference if we can ask backwards to the agreed trump suit then we can potentially have a repeat trump ask at game level by asking backwards to it so the rule now is that we do include the trump suit in backwards asking if we are at game level and we uh, and a repeat trump ask would make sense you know supposing we had a a theta and um, uh, responder showed exactly high high xx in the trump suit in response to theta or iota it's inconceivable i think that the opener is going to want to make a repeat trump ask in those circumstances to find out if responders got the jack as well just not going to happen so that's that's a situation where um i think a clarification of this would benefit us because um it's not going to um it's not going to make sense um so eventually i will change this little section of what's on the asking interference page to clarify that um, but the general rule is that we can ask backwards to trump suits um, at the moment okay so where we have preemptive interference um, in front of asker it's very easy though because now we can always differentiate between an immediate bit of the trump suit this is a bit like sigma an immediate bit of the trump suit being a repeat trump ask because if opener wants to sign off they're going to go via pass equals levensol okay um, so if it's preemptive interference it's easy it's when it's not preemptive interference that there's an issue and we are asking backwards um, so that that still needs to be clarified a little bit and I need to think a little bit more about it uh, that's one area the where we didn't really fully have time to flesh out the proposal it is mentioned on the changes on the website but uh, I think it will uh, get clarified a little bit okay any questions on uh, uh, repeat trump pass at game level okay listen guys it's quarter to 12 um, if I can very quickly have four people to sit I do have a couple of example hands which hopefully might show the difference between what we used to have and what we have now um, alternatively I can just deal them with me sat and I'll bid all four me sitting and bidding them might be quicker um, but uh, I'm quite happy to stand and let four of you sit if you're going to sit quickly anybody fancy their arm at this I've only got two hands prepared I'm afraid I've been working for the last 12 days and uh, I only had a chance to prepare two hands but we've only got we've only got 12 minutes anyway all right I'll do it here's the first one
All right, so dealer is north. Nothing out of the ordinary yet. Okay, so a positive by south. Okay, this is preemptive. Didn't used to be preemptive. Okay, so in the original definition of preemptive interference, here pass would be gamma in hearts and double would be alpha in diamonds over three spades but now here pass is Levensol and clearly north is not about to use that with a void in spades and double is gamma in hearts West chancing his arm. Now, is this preemptive? You betcha. Firstly, we've had the jump by West, but also this is interference at the four level. So this is also preemptive interference here. So now, pass is Levin's hold yet again. Again, North isn't going to use it on this instance, but that's what it is. So now, relay beta is a double whereas before there wasn't a jump bid of four spades it wasn't a jump so this wouldn't have been considered preemptive whereas it is now so before pass would have been relay beta and double would have been um, either a repeat trump ask in hearts or an alpha in diamonds uh, or epsilon in diamonds rather Okay, fairly simple example, but it shows, it does show how these kinds of sequences are going to get changed by how we've redefined that. North could, in a different hand, have uh, ended up making a, a penalty double of three spades and of four spades in this sequence. And at this vulnerability, it, it might have been uh, an attractive option. Not on this hand, but on a slightly different hand. Okay, any questions on that sequence? I will. Um, oh, I don't have a claim button. I can't claim, Roger. Uh, Esther, sorry. That's weird. My claim button is greyed out. Sorry guys, can't do it. Ah, maybe that's an idea. That's probably why. Okay, so there's an example. And, and hopefully you've seen how the change in the way we've defined preemptive interference has changed how these kinds of sequences are going to work. 
And it, it remains to be seen. Um, although having pass equals Levensol um, can be quite attractive, there may be some occasions where we actually lose out. Where, you know, on a hand like this, pass equals Levensol was actually of no benefit to North at all. And he might have wanted to say, use pass. Um, or sorry, use the double as, for example, an epsilon in diamonds or something like that at a lower level. Um, it remains to be seen whether it's always uh, um, an advantage. But I think overall, it's more likely to prove its worth. Okay, any questions on that sequence before we move on? Okay. I was actually halfway through trying to look at, trying to sort of come up with this kind of a hand before. Um... Okay, is this preemptive? No, it isn't. We're only at the two level. We've only had two bits, two bids. We've had no jumps, so it's not preemptive. Um, so here, pass would be gamma in diamonds, and uh, double would be alpha in hearts. Sorry. Um, so, gamma and diamonds. So, double is the first step because we've got D1, P2. Two of trumps, three clubs, three diamonds. random interference here almost but now a it's at the four level and b ops have bid three times and it's at at least the three level so although the vulnerability isn't as we specified earlier on for barrage bidding it doesn't really matter because the interference is at the four level anyway so here pass would be levin sold by east which they don't want, I don't think. Um, uh, um, yeah, passes Levensol, 
and uh, double will be epsilon in spades which seems reasonable Okay, so epsilon in spades, we want a four step ask. Pass by west is the first step. So. Okay, is this a lead directing double? I think not really, but actually it doesn't matter. Because we've already had an epsilon in spades, so what I said about lead directing doubles wouldn't apply here anyway. Okay, this is really just, I mean, north bid spades, so it's just saying, I don't think you can make four spades. Mainly because they don't understand the bidding sequence, I suspect. But in any case, we've already had an epsilon in space with the redouble of four clubs. Sorry, the double of four clubs, rather. So this business about lead directing doubles wouldn't apply here anyway. Um, it's unlikely that we're going to want a, a, a repeat epsilon in spades um, when North has bid the suit. So, over the double, this can't be pass equals Levin Sol territory because it's only a double by north. So, redouble here is going to be uh, an epsilon in hearts, and a pass is going to be potentially um, a repeat epsilon in diamond sorry repeat gamma in diamonds because we're actually below game level so um and we could potentially do that but actually i think east has such a powerful hand here knowing that west has got ace to six diamonds and probably king x in hearts maybe king queen but probably king x uh, they've got good enough hearts that uh, they're just going to bid seven here. You can only count 12 tricks in no trumps, so I think seven diamonds is preferable. Um, the spade rough in the west hand is not really going to help them if West has King X in spades and yes they might be able to establish a uh, a fourth heart trick but it's only with roughs you can't guarantee to get 13 tricks in no trumps Okay, any questions on that one? Again, hopefully, those two hands have given you a little bit of a flavour of how the changes that we've made over the last few weeks are going to affect these kinds of sequences. You have to be almost more on your toes um, with regard to whether it's preemptive or not. The previous definition was very simple and very easy to apply the new one is definitely more complicated and I apologize for that but it's been it's long long overdue 
Okay, any questions on what I've covered this evening? Please, if you haven't already done so, have a look at the discussion in the discussion forum because it's quite, uh, quite useful actually just to see the way that these ideas have developed and uh, the things that have been chipped in and there are some things that have been suggested and which I've just discarded on the, the grounds of frequency or complexity. Um, and indeed, there may be even some of the discussions to do with why things are included or not in changes in the system that uh, uh, might make it easier for you to understand um, what I feel matters in terms of how the system develops. I'm, I'm very loath to include things that are making the system a lot more complex unless there's a really clear benefit that can be demonstrated from adopting them. Uh, back in the day when Jason and I were just playing the system and nobody else in the world was playing it, um, it didn't matter. We could do what we liked. And there are things that Brian has suggested this week that, and, and I've said this in the discussion forum, that Jason and I would have gone for them in a heartbeat back in the 1980s um, because we didn't care how complicated we made the system back then because we could both cope with it. Uh, but now it's a system that uh, a considerable number of people are playing and uh, I've got to teach it. And so not making the system too complicated is quite important to me now. If anything, I'm trying to simplify things where I can. This is one exercise that has made it a bit more complex, but at the same time, we have taken the opportunity to clarify and explain things a bit better uh, where we can. So hopefully it's fairly um, workload neutral in terms of the system as a whole. Uh, anybody got any questions or comments? If not, I think we're going to call a halt there. Uh, like I said, I've worked the last 12 days. I haven't had any rest days for 12 days and uh, I was working nine hours today and I'm working nine hours tomorrow and I'll be up in uh, just under six hours to go to work. So anyway guys, I shall leave it there for tonight if you don't mind. Uh, thank you very much for coming and uh, next week is going to be a asking interference tourney as I recall just let me just double check I think that's what's on the agenda for next week um, just hang on a second you're most welcome I hope you found this useful um, no I'm wrong next next I got a second. Naomi, I've just been called a beast. Why? I don't know, but they all say they love you, or John does anyway. You're um, a beast. I'm a, but I'm a beast. Tell them that you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi says you're right, John. <laughs> right, I was wrong. Anyway, next week is uh, a look back at the two diamond opening um, in the light of asking bids, because we weren't really covering the asking bids fully when we first revisit when we first looked at two diamonds so this is a look back at two diamonds in the light of uh, asking bid sequences and asking bids being involved and the week after that is a look back at all of the other intermediate openings and how asking bids are interwoven with them because again we didn't spend much time on that aspect of the intermediate openings um, the first time around um, okay so that's the next couple of weeks um, I don't think I've got any other weeks coming up immediately where I'm going to be struggling to do a Saturday session this one tonight was marginal um, the one last week I'm afraid was just totally impossible uh, 
So hopefully I shall see you here at 9pm UTC next Saturday and we'll have another look at two diamonds. Okay, night all, uh, thanks for coming and see you soon.